right, so we are reading um, chapter four of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. <clears throat> there was a silence inside the hut. Only the sea and the whistling wind could be heard. I'm a what? gasped Harry. A wizard, of course, said Hagrid, sitting back down on the sofa, which groaned and sank even lower. And a thumping good one, if I'd say, once you've been trained up a bit. With a mum and dad like yours, what else would you be? And I reckon it's about time you read your letter. Harry stretched his hand out at last to take the yellowish envelope addressed in emerald green to Mr. H. Potter, the floor, hut on the rock, the sea. He pulled out the letter and read, Hogwarts, School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Headmaster, Albus Dumbledore, Order, Order of Merlin, First Class, Grand Sorcerer, Chief Warlock, Supreme, Supreme Mugwump, International Confederation of Wizards. Dear Mr. Potter, we are pleased to inform you that you have a place at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find an enclosed list of all necessary books and equipment. Term begins on first, uh, the 1st of September. We await your owl by no later than July 31st. Sincerely yours, Minevra uh, McGonagall, Deputy Head Mistress. Questions exploded inside Harry's head like fireworks and he couldn't decide which to ask first. After a few minutes, he stammered, what does it mean they await my owl? Galloping Gorgons, that reminds me, said Hagrid, uh, clapping a hand to his forehead with enough force to knock over a cart horse. And yet from another pocket inside his overcoat, he pulled out an owl, a real live, rather ruffled looking owl, a long quill and a roll of parchment. With his tongue between his teeth, he scribbled a note which Harry could read upside down. Dear Mr. Dumbledore, given Harry his letter, taking him to buy his things tomorrow. Weather's horrible. Hope you're well. Hagrid. Hagrid rolled up the note, gave it to the owl, which clamped it in its beak and went to the door, threw the owl out into the storm. Then he came back and sat down as though this was normal as talking on the telephone. There's a little owl. Harry realized his mouth was open and closed it quickly. Where was I, said Hagrid. But at that moment, Uncle Vernon, still ashen-faced but very angry, moved into the firelight. He's not going, he said. Hagrid grunted. I'd like to see a great muggle like you try to stop him. A what, asked Harry. A muggle, said Hagrid. It's what we call non-magic folk like them. And it's your bad luck you grew up in a family of the biggest muggles I ever laid eye on. We swore when we took him, we'd put a stop to this rubbish, said Uncle Vernon. We swore we'd stamp it out of him. Wizard indeed. You knew, said Harry. You knew I'm a, a wizard? Knew, shrieked Aunt Petunia suddenly. Knew, of course we knew. How could you not be? My dratted sister being what she was. Oh, she got a letter just like that and disappeared off to that, that school and came home every holiday with her pockets full of frog spawn turning teacups into rats. I was the only one for, saw, who saw her for what she was, a freak. But for my mother and father, oh no, it was Lily this and Lily that and they were so proud of having a witch in the family. She stopped to draw a deep breath and then went ranting on. It seemed she had been wanting to say this for all these years. Then she met that Potter at school and they left and got married and had you. And of course, I knew you, GB, just the same, just as strange, just as abnormal. And then, if you please, she went and got herself blown up and we landed with you. Harry had gone very white. As soon as he found his voice, he said, blown up? You told me they died in a car crash. Car crash, roared Hagrid, jumping up so angrily the Dursley scuttled back into their corner. How could a car crash kill Lily and James Potter? It's an outrage, a scandal. Harry Potter not knowing his own story when every kid in our world knows his name. But why? What happened? asked Harry urgently. The anger faded from Hagrid's face. He looked suddenly anxious. I never expected this, he said in a low, worried voice. 
I had no idea. When Dumbledore told me there might be get, uh, trouble getting a hold of you, how much you didn't know. Mm. Harry, I don't know if I'm the right person to tell you, but I mean, someone's gotta. And you can't go off to Hogwarts not knowing. He threw a dirty look at the Dursleys. Well, it's best you know as much as I can tell you. Mine, I can't tell you everything. It's a great mystery, parts of it. He sat down and stared into the fire for a few seconds and then said, It begins, I suppose, with a person called, well, it's incredible you don't know his name, but everybody knows, the world knows, who? Well, I don't like saying the name if I can help it. No one does. Why not? Gulping gargoyles, hot Harry. People are still scared. <sighs> this is difficult. See, there was this wizard who went, well, bad. As bad as you can go. Worse. Worse than worse. His name, his name was Hagrid Gulped, but no words came out. Well, you could write it down, Harry suggested. Nah, I can't spell it. All right. Voldemort. Hagrid shuddered. Don't make me say it again. Anyways, this wizard, about 20 years ago, started looking for followers, and he got them too. Some were afraid. Some just wanted a bit of his power, because he was getting himself all sorts of power, all right? Dark days, Harry. Didn't know who to trust. Didn't dare get friendly with strange wizards or witches. Terrible things happened. He was taking over. Of course, some stood up to him, and he killed them, horribly. One of the only safest places was Hogwarts. Reckon Dumbledore is the only one you know who was afraid of. Didn't dare try to take him to uh, the school. Not just then, anyway. Now, your mom and dad were as good a witch and wizard I ever knew. Head boy and girl at Hogwarts in their day. Suppose the mystery is why you know who never tried to get them on their side before. Probably knew they were too close to Dumbledore to want anything to do with him. Maybe he thought he could persuade them. Maybe he thought uh, they, he just wanted them out of the way. All anyone knows is, he turned up in the village where you was living on Halloween 10 years ago. Here are the Dursleys hiding in the corner. You were just one years old. He came to your house and Hagrid suddenly pulled out a very dirty spotted handkerchief and blew his nose uh, with the sound of a foghorn. All right, we will continue for part three.